Struggling with myself right now. Last year was the best and worst year of my life. I suffered a major injury, got rejected from my dream schools, and lost the chance to do all the last with my friends. Getting my acceptance to come here was one of my few highlights, but I thought I would be happier in college. I thought I would meet new friends and have so many opportunities. For the most part, I love being here but I keep going back to what happened last year, wishing things were different. Since I left home, I've been trying to make up for all the things I wish happened. I've been in a constant state of pushing myself to do better, to improve, to improve faster. I'm burnt out. I'm trying to do as many things as I can at once in hopes that I'll make up for what I lost. I don't wanna be burnt out. I don't wanna be jealous of others, I just want to be proud of myself again and happy where I'm at. I just don't know what to do. Disappointments create a void in us that is painful to carry and difficult to fill. Telling someone who has suffered a disappointment to just get over it ignores that person's real need, restoration to wholeness. A person who has suffered a big loss can't just walk off the pain. The things that you lost as a result of this pandemic matter. And your grief is a natural process to that loss, a natural response. However, we can't fill the hole created by something we've lost by stuffing that space with other things. In order to experience joy in the now, we must heal from the losses of our past. So lean into your grief rather than trying to patch over the whole. Let God restore you to fullness by filling you with his comfort rather than trying to do everything because you are afraid that the pandemic might steal all the things that you love most about college do only the things for which you have sufficient time and energy. And in a while, your spirit will be knit back together and the experiences that you are having now will, feel, will not feel like substitutions for the things you've lost. Savor the experiences that you're having now and they will fill you with joy and satisfaction. been strong and I've been broken within a moment. I've been faithful and I've been reckless at everything. I've held everything together and watched it shatter. I've stood tall and I have crumbled in the same I have wrestled and I have trembled It's my heart adrift and drifted home again. Plundered placing to nothing desperate to find redemption. And every time I turn around, Lord, you're still there. I was found, for I was lost. I was yours. For I was not grace to spare for all my mistakes and that purchase read me. And 
Just rest me. You love me as you find me. shattered. When I came to college, I was in a relationship with someone who I thought I would marry. However, after two years, we ended things. I started counseling here at Anderson, and we talked about many things, including being raped in my past. I left that meeting feeling numb, on edge, and unsure of how I could get through life. I started self-harming and fell deep into depression and anxiety. My sophomore year took a turn. I could deal with things, be happy without the rape being on my mind every time I was in the dark or around a guy. But then a guy I had been talking to online came over. I had to run to my room to grab something. I let him come with me. He sexually assaulted me. This brought up the rape from years before all over again. A place I felt safe no longer felt safe. I started self-harming again. When AU shut down, I moved back home. I don't have a good relationship with my family. My mom told me that I was never going to amount to anything, that I wasn't going to graduate, and that she was going to disown me, drain my bank account, and take my car. I started to believe her. I really hated the person I was and truly felt like my entire life was a failure. Right before this year, I began self-harming again. I'm still there. I'm picking up the pieces. I'm trying to recover and get back to thriving, but life is hard. I felt alone, worthless, and like a failure more times than I can count. Even though I have never been raped or assaulted, I somehow relate to your story. I was married with three children for 19 years. I found out my husband was seeing someone else. I was fortunate to be a stay-at-home mom, but this reality forced me to seek employment to take care of my family. 
I was 39 years old and hadn't had a job since I was 18 years old. I felt like you did. I felt alone, afraid, and that I somehow failed my family. I felt like no one would ever truly love me. On top of that, I hated what my husband had done. You see, my mother was the breadwinner of the family. My dad did not hold a job and throughout the years I had caught him with other women. I hated him for that. When he became sick and was dying, he said to me, you do not love me. I, hold, I told him, I love you because you are my father. I do not respect what you have done. He smiled and died shortly afterwards. To have my husband do the one thing he knew I hated most put me in a downward spiral. I did seek professional help. Out of all of those sessions, I was able to find my self-worth. The one thing that stuck with me during counseling was my psychologist told me, one is a whole number. You do not need to have someone to make you whole. Throughout the years, I have learned to be very strong, love myself for who I am, and I actually did a pretty good job raising my three children by myself. I was fortunate that jobs came along to help me financially with my expenses. When I started believing in me is when things started turning around. Like you, I was not close to my siblings. I took care of my mother till she passed away and have had very little contact with my brother and sisters. I have a support group of friends that helped me get through the loss of not only my mother, but the loss of my siblings. Please know God is there with you. You are loved. You're not a failure. You're not, you're going to succeed. There are people out there who will love you for you. Reach out and let God guide you to a strong relationship with him and others. Just believe. Remember, you are whole. The other people that come into your life are the ones who make you your cup overflow. I love you, and I hope you find your true lasting love amongst friends and family. I have faith in your success. God bless. Unrestrained, your love is wild, your love is wild for me, it isn't shy, it's unashamed, your love is proud to be seen.
heart's not the restless kind. Your love's not passive. It's never disengaged. It's always present. It hangs on every word we say. Love keeps its promises. It keeps its word. It honors what's sacred. It's us again. Inadequate. I feel like not many people know much about me. I never thought that I was somebody. It took me years to discover who I was, and I still have doubts about it. Right now, I'm struggling with not being good enough. Will I ever be enough? I work as much as possible so I can barely afford college. I get good grades so that people will think I'm good enough for them. I try to let go of my fear of sex so that I can be good enough. I push myself so hard so I can be good enough in my major, but I will never reach that good enough. I will never be the person who people want me to be. I have always put a lot of pressure on myself to measure up to others even with constant reminders of how God sees me. I want relief, and I need the constant hatred of myself to flee. This resonated with me. I live in a strange dichotomy of extreme self-confidence and extreme self-critique. The confidence and motivation that propelled my career is under constant attack by the person I am behind the scenes. I often wonder if I am never enough. There's not enough of me to be the wife I want to be, to be the mother I want to be. There's not enough time or talent of me to share with my students. There's not enough of me to be the friend I want to be to my friends. There's far from enough of me to be the daughter or sister that I should be. 
I should be more financially stable. I should have a cleaner house. I should not lose my temper with my loved ones. I should not take my mother for granted. I should be more present of a sister to my brother and a daughter to my father. I am not tall enough, thin enough, beautiful enough, smart enough, self-reliant enough. I'm not enough. Everything on my resume is real. I've done all that it says. I've been to all the places. I've earned all of those written words. And yet somehow in my mind, I am still not good enough to be where I am. Imposter syndrome is real. These are the thoughts that whisper in my mind and heart daily. No one has ever said them to me aloud except myself. And yet these thoughts can crush your drive and determination. If nothing is ever enough to the self-critic, then what is the point of trying? And so I say to the student that even the grown-up with 30 years in their profession and resumes that read golden with families and spouses and careers and houses can feel that they are still somehow not enough. But I know that God does not ask us for perfection. He knows our hearts. Sometimes the point of a storm is not to shine through it, not to find the rainbow after it, but to simply trust that God is with us while we endure it. That's the point of faith. I'm doing all I can when I can. And though it may never be enough for my critical self, I know that I'm still enough for him. they're succeeding before you it doesn't mean they're succeeding in replacement of you there's still a place for you there will always be a place for you even if they came up after you and are doing the exact things you dreamed you would do they have not replaced you even if you put years into things still are not invalidated by those who are passionate about similar things. No two people's stories are the same. And there is no way to know when, where, or how things will play out, but you can know this to be true. What they have done with their lives does not limit yours. Who you have been called to be is who you have been called to be, and it does not matter what others do. And while you're waiting, you're not just waiting. You are growing into who you were meant to be, and maybe some of the things you thought you wanted were actually rooted in something deeper that went beyond what you could see, and maybe you will start to see those deeper, richer things when you focus more on growing and less on worrying, letting everything fall in the place that it's supposed to be, even if it ends up looking a little different than you were expecting. it hasn't felt like it lately but there is still a place at the table for you you know that gut feeling you have been having lately the one you feel when you see someone else is doing the same things you want to do 
or when it seems your dreams have been pulled out from beneath you, perhaps that is more than just a feeling of inadequacy, but a fire slowly igniting brave within your soul, reminding you that there is more than what you currently see and what you are feeling. What you are feeling is the process of becoming who you were meant to be. Finding a new foundation. Who am I? I am a person whose personality is a combination of characters from stories I've read. All built upon the foundation my family and friends instilled in me when I was younger. The fictional characters shaped me in a way that the foundation did not. And when that foundation started to crumble, the characters were the only things I could hold on to. I'm coming to terms with the fact that the real people in my life aren't perfect. I'm coming to the terms with the fact that I've lived my whole life in a fictional story and I don't understand the world outside my books. It scares me to think that my story will come to an end. I'm starting to realize that I will never be perfect. Who am I? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In my beginning was the word, the words of Anne of Green Gables and Nancy Drew and all the babysitters in the club. Their words were so clear that their worlds came alive for me and I longed to just close my eyes and wake up in one of them. We all learn through the stories of others. Everyone who inhabits a society, fictional or real, builds their identity through their own unique combinations of actions that have already been done. It might seem like there's little freedom in that, but I find great comfort in it. There is so much wisdom to be gleaned from stories. I remember what it was like to struggle with not knowing who I was. Studying literature helped since it taught me that we only know what a word means because we all agree on what that word is not. I think learning who you are is the same. Time and a few trials will teach you what you are not. It's impossible to get it right the first time, but by relying on the stories of those you trust, you'll get there. In the meantime, I wish you comfort from the one whose word is with us all. And who knows, maybe one day you'll find that you are the author of a world that helps guide others to wisdom.
Right. 
Dreaming in 